Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Saira Mujtaba and with me is Manoj Singh Rana with the evening news. The headlines. Mortal remains of Ram Vilas Paswan flown to Patna cremation to take place tomorrow. Election Commission doubles broadcast and telecast time for national and recognized state parties on DD and AIR during Bihar Assembly polls. COVID recovery rate improves to 85.52%. World Food Program awarded 2020 Nobel Peace Prize for combating hunger. In tennis, Rafael Nadal faces Dee Schwartzman while Novak Djokovic to clash with Stefano Tsitsipas in French Open semi-finals. And Rajasthan Royals take on Delhi Capitals in Sharjah in IPL cricket. As the nation fights the COVID-19 pandemic, we begin with a message of precaution to stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain two gaz ki duri for social distancing, and focus on hand and face hygiene. And now the news in detail. President Ram Nath Kovind and Prime Minister Narendra Modi have paid their last respects to Union Minister and LJP leader Ram Vilas Paswan. The president visited the residence of the departed leader this morning to pay his tributes. The prime minister visited the residence and made the family mem- met the family members of Ram Vilas Paswan. Union ministers Rajnath Singh, Amit Shah, Ravi Shankar Prasad and Dr. Harsh Vardhan and BJP president JP Nadda, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi, D Raja of CPI, NCP chief Sharad Pawar and other senior leaders reached his residence and paid their respects to the departed leader. Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu, Congress leader Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi and other leaders have also condoled the demise of Ram Vilas Paswan. The Union Cabinet has condoled the demise of Union Minister for Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution Ram Vilas Paswan. During its meeting today, the cabinet observed silence for 2 minutes in memory of the departed leader. In its resolution, the cabinet said In his passing away the nation has lost an eminent leader a distinguished parliamentarian and an able administrator born on 5th July 1946 at Sheherbani in Khagaria district of Bihar Ram Vilas Paswan was one of was one of the most popular leaders from the state and enjoyed a strong mass support he was elected to the Bihar legislative assembly in 1969 as a member of Sanyukt Socialist Party Thereafter he was elected as a member of the 6th Lok Sabha from Hajipur constituency in 1977 by a record margin Describing the LGP founder as the voice of the oppressed the resolution said he always championed the cause of the marginalized sections of the society The cabinet also extended its heartfelt condolences to the bereaved family on behalf of the government and the entire nation The cabinet approved a state funeral to be accorded to the departed leader. Earlier, the mortal remains of the LJP leader were brought to his residence in the national capital. The mortal remains have reached Patna and will be kept at LJP's office over there. The cremation will take place in Patna tomorrow. A state funeral will also be accorded to him. The Home Ministry has announced that the national flag will fly at half mast in Delhi and capitals of all states and union territories today as a mark of respect to the departed leader. The LGP leader passed away yesterday at a hospital in New Delhi. He was 74. The Lok Jan Shakti Party founder and Union Minister for Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution was elected to the Lok Sabha eight times and also held the record of winning his constituency Hajipur in Bihar. with the highest margin for several years the reserve bank of india in its bi-monthly monetary policy statement issued today has maintained a status quo keeping the key interest rates unchanged the reverse repo rate remains unchanged at 3.35% the repo rate at 4% the monetary policy committee has also decided to maintain its accommodative stance as long as necessary at least through the current financial year and next year as the indian economy is entering into a decisive phase in its fight against coronavirus the major announcements today rbi governor shaktikan das proposed that the rtgs system for real time fund transfer will become 24 by 7 from december 2020 He said the RBI stands ready to undertake further measures as necessary to show market participants of access to liquidity and easy finance conditions. 
The new housing loans risk weights to be linked to loan-to-value ratio and also rationalize risk weights for all new housing loans until March 31, 2022. Also, the bank will extend scheme for co-lending to all NBFCs and HFCs. As per GDP, Mr. Das said, the growth may break out of contraction and enter positive zone by the fourth week of the current fiscal for the year 2021 as a whole, therefore, real GDP is expected to decline by 9.5% with risks tilted to the downside. If, however, the current momentum of upturn gains ground, a faster and stronger rebound is eminently feasible. Headline inflation has moved up from March 2020 levels and has persisted above the tolerance band of the target. In an effort to provide flexibility to exporters in the realization of export proceeds, the Reserve Bank has decided to discontinue the system-based automatic caution listing of exporters. Addressing a virtual press conference today, RBI Governor Shakti Das said the decision will also empower exporters to negotiate better terms with overseas buyers, stating that exports have been adversely affected due to the pandemic-related contraction in demand Mr. Da said the decision is likely to make the system more exporter-friendly and equitable. The Defence Research and Development Organisation, DRDO, today successfully flight-tested indigenously developed anti-radiation missile Rudram. It was successfully flight-tested onto a radiation target located on Vila Island off the Odisha coast. The missile was launched from Su-30 MK-1 fighter aircraft it hit the radiation target with pinpoint accuracy. Rudram is the first indigenous anti-radiation missile of the country for the Indian Air Force being developed by DRDO. The missile is integrated on Su-30 MK-1 fighter aircraft as a launch platform, having capability of varying ranges based on launch conditions. It has INS GPS navigation with passive homing head for the final attack. The missile is a potent weapon for the Indian Air Force for suppression of enemy air defense effectively from large standoff ranges. Our correspondent reports that with this, India established indigenous capability to develop long-range air-launched anti-radiation missiles for neutralizing enemy radars and communication sites. The Election Commission has decided to double the broadcast and telecast time allotted to each national party and recognize State Party of Bihar on Durdarshan and All India Radio during the general election to the Legislative Assembly of Bihar. The Commission said that it took the decision in consultation with Prasar Bharti in view of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and enhanced relevance of non-contact based campaign. The facilities will be available from the regional kendra of the All India Radio and Durdarshan and relayed by other stations within Bihar. A base time of 90 minutes will be given to each national party and recognized state party. The additional time to be allotted to the party has been decided on the basis of the poll performance of the party in the last assembly election. In a single session of the broadcast, no party will be allocated more than 30 minutes. The period of broadcast and telecast will be between the last date of filing of nominations and two days before the date of polls in Bihar. The guidelines prescribed by the Commission for telecast and broadcast will be strictly followed. The parties will be required to submit transcripts and recording in advance. In Bihar, scrutiny of nomination papers of candidates is underway for the first phase of assembly elections in 71 constituencies. A total of 1,357 candidates have filed their nominations in this phase. In the, in the Tikari constituency of Gaya district, 31 nominations have been submitted. This is the highest number of nominations in any assembly constituency in this phase. For the first phase of elections, the last date for withdrawal of candidature is 12th of this month and polling will be held on 28th of October. Due to the large number of aspirants this time, Many constituencies witnessed rise in the number of nominations. More from our correspondent. For the first phase of elections in the 28 assembly constituencies, there are more than 20 nominations in each constituency. Large number of dissidents have filed nominations against their authorized candidates. 
ऑल मेजर पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज आर फेसिंग चैलेंजेस फ्रॉम देयर रिवेल लीडर्स राष्ट्रीय लोक समता पार्टी लोक जनशक्ति पार्टी बहुजन समाज पार्टी एंड फॉर्मर एम पी पप्पू यादव लेड जन अधिकार पार्टी हैव गिवेन टिकेट टू सेवरल डिसीजेंट लीडर्स द आर एल एस पी एंड बी एस पी एक्सटेंडेड देयर अलायंस एकोमोडेटिंग ए आई एम आई एम एंड फॉर्मर यूनियन मिनिस्टर देवेंद्र प्रसाद यादव पार्टी समाजवादी जनता दल धर्मेंद्र कुमार राय ए आई आर न्यूज पटना The country is witnessing a steady fall in the number of active covid cases incessantly for the past 3 weeks. The number of patients infected by the coronavirus has been below the 10 lakh mark constantly. In the last 24 hours with around 78,000 recoveries, the number of active cases has further declined to nearly 8 lakh 93,000. The country continues to register steady growth in terms of covid recoveries and has registered a cumulative recovery rate of 85.52%. With over 59 lakh recoveries so far, India also continues to occupy the top global position as the country with the maximum number of recovered corona patients. The number of recovered patients has also overtaken the active cases by nearly 7 times. Currently India's case fatality rate stands at 1.54%. The country has progressively maintained a low case fatality rate and stands at almost half of the current global average. In the last 24 hours 70,496 new cases were reported, taking the total number of positive cases in the country so far to 69,6152. In all 964 deaths were reported taking the toll to 1 lakh 6490 A total of 2860 new confirmed cases of coronavirus were reported in Delhi in the last 24 hours taking the total number of cases to over 3 lakh 3000 The Delhi government has said that over 2 lakh 76000 people affected with coronavirus have been cured so far. In the last 24 hours 3098 people recovered and 39 deaths were reported in the national capital taking the toll to 5692. Presently the total number of active corona cases in the national capital is 21955. Kerala continue to report surge in covid cases at it confirmed 9250 positive cases today 8048 recoveries were also reported in the country today which is the highest single day recovery recorded so far meanwhile 25 deaths were also confirmed today due to covid taking the death toll in state to 955 The active covid cases in Kerala rose to 91756. In Uttar Pradesh there is a sharp decline in the number of covid infections in the last 3 weeks. In only 22 days the total number of active covid patients has reduced by more than 27000. On the other hand the recovery rate from covid infection is improving day by day and has now reached around 89%. More from our correspondent Expressing satisfaction over the decrease of 27000 active covid positive cases in the past 22 days chief minister yogi adityanath has said that all effective measures should be taken to break the covid infection chain directing for special vigilance on the lucknow kanpur nagar prayagraj meerat ghaziabad gautam buddh nagar and varanasi districts the chief minister said that the treatment facilities should be strengthened further presiding over a high level meeting chief minister directed to sort complete information from the dms and cmos of the districts where the recovery rate of covid is low and to ensure that effective steps are taken to increase the recovery rate meanwhile the number of active covid patients in the state has come down to 41287 in the last 24 hours 48 people lost their lives due to the virus taking the death toll from covid 19 to 6293 sushil chandra tiwari air news lucknow In Manipur, three persons died due to COVID-19 in the past 24 hours, increasing the total fatality in the state to 86. On the other hand, 131 people, including eight personnel of the Central Armed Police Force, were confirmed as new COVID-19 positive cases in the past 24 hours in Manipur, thus taking the total count to 12,810 in the state so far. Among the new positive cases, 114 locals do not have a travel history and are suspected to be infected with the virus through local transmission. 
147 persons were discharged in the past 24 hours and the recovery rate is 77.01%. So far, Manipur has recorded total of 9,866 recovered and discharged cases, while the number of active cases is 2,858. Meghalaya today registered 127 new COVID-19 cases, taking the total active cases to 2,424, with one COVID-related death from East Khasi Hills District. The total number of fatalities in the state has gone up to 61. The Directorate of Health Services informed that Meghalaya also witnessed 71 new recoveries, bringing the total number of recovered cases in the state to 4,903. The Indian Railways has joined the public movement or Jan Andolan against COVID-19 in a big way. Railways Minister Piyush Goyal administered the COVID pledge to railway officers and staff through video conferencing. On the first day of the campaign, more than 5 lakh 41 thousand railway employees took the pledge across zones, divisions, and public sector undertakings. Banners and posters have been surmounted in 2,452 railway stations across Indian railways, 273 trains, and 847 office buildings of the railways across the country. The chairman, Railway Board. Vinod Kumar Yadav has instructed all the officers and staff to come forward and participate aggressively in this nationwide public movement. Director of All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi, Dr. Ranveer Guleria says that the three steps to fight the coronavirus, as enumerated by Prime Minister, assume all the most significance in view of the coming festive season and the change of weather. Battle against COVID-19 has to have a Jan Andolan. Every citizen of the country has to get involved, and this is a battle that has to be won by community participation rather than through hospitals. And for this, three major steps which the Honorable Prime Minister has today announced are very, very important. And one of them is physical distancing, wearing mask, and regular hand washing, either using soap or a hand sanitizer. If we follow these three steps, especially during festive season and during the winter months, we will be able to. decrease substantially the number of cases and this will also lead to decrease in the death rate we can win the battle against covid-19 member niti ayog dr vk paul says the next 3 months are very crucial in fight against coronavirus as we are going to celebrate festivals of all religions and regions during the period Dr Paul told AIR News that the three steps enumerated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi are the only way to keep ourselves safe Our nation continues to suffer the ill effects of COVID-19 pandemic and in coming months we are going to face a tougher challenge. These are the months of winter when the virus can be more lethal. These are the months of festivals and festivities of all religions in all parts of the country where we want to celebrate them with other people in groups in family. But these are the situations where the virus can infect us much more and much more badly. Therefore, we have to protect ourselves. And in this context, the Honorable Prime Minister has given a call for Jan Andolan. And Jan Andolan for those behavior, those habits which prevent us from contracting the corona infection. And these are three steps that we must take. First and foremost, we must wear mask. Whenever we are in the presence of anybody else within the home and outside the home, the second habit that we must inculcate is that if we are in the presence of other people, we must maintain two gaz ki doori. This ensures that it is difficult for the virus to travel from one person to the other, and it's a great protection. And the third behavior that we should embrace is to repeatedly wash our hands, use soap and water, or use a sanitizer. Hygienic hands will ensure. that we don't pass on droplets containing viruses from one person to the other tennis player sanya mirza has said that precautions hold the key in the fight against covid-19 in the wake of upcoming festival season this festive season make sure you keep yourself and your loved ones safe wear a mask wash your hands and maintain social distancing join the jan andolan against covid-19 You're listening to the evening news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Mortal remains of Ram Vilas Paswan flown to Patna cremation to take place tomorrow. 
Election Commission doubles broadcast and dedicates time for national and recognized state parties on DD and AIR during Bihar Assembly polls. COVID recovery rate improves to 85.52%. World Food Programme awarded 2020 Nobel Peace Prize for combating hunger. In tennis, Rafael Nadal faces D. Schwartzmann, while Novak Djokovic to clash with Stefano Tsitsipas in French Open semi-finals. And Rajasthan Royals take on Delhi Capitals in Sharjah in IPL cricket. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. Three steps to stay protected and stay safe from COVID-19. Wear face mask, do gaz ki duri to maintain social distancing, maintain hand and face hygiene. Welcome back. The Maharashtra government has postponed the Maharashtra Public Service Commission or MPSA examination that was scheduled to be held this Sunday. This is the third time that the exam has been postponed. Speaking to reporters after meeting the Maratha community leaders, Chief Minister Udhav Thakre said the exam has been postponed as students needed more time for preparation. He said that the new dates will be announced soon. External Affairs Minister S. Jai Shankar has assured Afghan peace negotiator Abdullah Abdullah that India remains committed to peace, prosperity and stability in Afghanistan. In a tweet, Mr. Jai Shankar said, During the meeting, a good discussion was held on the bilateral cooperation and regional issues. Mr. Jai Shankar also welcomed his insights and perspectives on recent developments. Dr. Abdullah Abdullah in a tweet said that they exchanged views on the Afghan peace process bilateral relations and regional support for peace efforts. The World Food Programme has won the 2020 Nobel Peace Prize for its efforts to combat hunger and food insecurity around the globe. Our correspondent reports that the announcement was made in Oslo by Beret Rais Andersen, the chair of the Nobel Committee. The prize was given to World Food Program for its effort to combat hunger and for its contribution to veteran conditions for peace in conflict affected areas as well as for acting as a driving force in efforts to prevent the use of hunger as a weapon of war and conflict. The World Food Program is the world's largest humanitarian organization that promotes food security in over 88 countries. In 2019, it had provided assistance to 97 million people who are victims of acute food insecurity and hunger. The World Food Program distributes more than 15 billion rations every year. With Dipendra Kumar, Anupam Mishra, AR News, Delhi. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. The Information Broadcasting Ministry has issued advisories to private television channels to adhere to the program code under the Cable Television Network Regulation Act 1995. Under the program code, no program should contain false and suggestive innuendos and half-truths, obscene and defamatory content. The program should not criticize, malign or slander any individual in person or certain groups, segments of social, public and moral life of the country. Government today said that the total procurement of paddy across all states has increased by 48% from 17.7 lakh ton last year to over 26 lakh ton this year. The Agriculture Ministry said in the current Kharif season, Punjab registered unprecedented increase of procurement from 1.76 lakh ton last year to around 16 lakh ton this year as in yesterday, which is more than 900% of the Kharif procurement so far as compared to the last year. The ministry said in Tamil Nadu, paddy procurement was 9,517 ton as against 320 ton. Similarly, in Uttar Pradesh, the paddy procurement so far in this marketing season has been 4,423 ton as against 92 ton last year. 
both states have seen significant jump in procurement. India Post has commenced celebration of the National Postal Week from World Post Day today. The Communications Ministry said the purpose of World Post Day is to create awareness of the role of the postal sector in people's and businesses' everyday lives and its contribution to the social and economic development. In French Open tennis, the men's single semi-final match between Rafael Nadal and Dee Schwartzmann is underway. Nadal, a 12-time French Open champion, will be aiming to equal Roger Federer's record of 20 Grand Slam titles. In another semi-final, Novak Djokovic will clash with Stefano Tsitsipras later in the evening. The winners will meet in the final on Sunday. In the women's single summit clash tomorrow, teenager Iga Swiatek will take on Sofia Kennan. In the Indian Premier League cricket, Delhi Capitals were 135 for 5 in 16 overs against Rajasthan Royals at Sharjah when reports last came in. Earlier, Rajasthan won the toss and elected to field. Last night, Sunrisers Hyderabad beat Kings Eleven Punjab by 69 runs in Dubai. Two matches will be played tomorrow. In the first match, Kings Eleven Punjab will take on Kolkata Knight Riders at Abu Dhabi. And in the second encounter, Chennai Super Kings will meet Royal Challengers Bangalore in Dubai. The final day of RACE 2020 or Responsible AI for Social Empowerment 2020 Summit witnessed discussion on themes like leveraging artificial intelligence or AI for pandemic preparedness, role of AI in fostering collaboration and innovation, and measures to create intelligent data repositories that can catalyze innovation using AI. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had inaugurated the summit on the 5th of this month. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will launch the physical distribution of property cards under the Swamitva scheme on Sunday through video conferencing to transform rural India and empower millions of people. The Swamitva scheme, which was launched in April this year, aims to provide the record of rights to village household owners in rural areas and issue property cards. And now let's take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. The national capital Delhi will have mainly clear sky. It will have a minimum temperature of 19 degrees Celsius and maximum of 35 degrees Celsius. In Mumbai, there will be generally cloudy sky. The minimum temperature will be 28 degrees Celsius and the maximum 30 degrees. Chennai will experience generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. The temperature will hover between 27 and 35 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will witness partly cloudy sky with possibility of moderate rain or thunderstorm. The minimum temperature in the metropolis will be 26 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be 34 degrees Celsius. On to the north in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, the minimum temperature will be 19 degrees Celsius in Jammu, while the maximum will be 34 degrees. The city will have mainly clear sky. Srinagar will have mainly clear sky. The temperature will hover between 5 and 27 degrees Celsius. In Ladakh, there will be mainly clear sky as well. The wind temperature will be minus 1 degree Celsius and maximum will be 21 degree Celsius. Gilgit will experience partly cloudy sky. The temperature will hover between 9 and 29 degree Celsius. In Muzaffarabad, there will be mainly clear sky. The minimum temperature will be 13 and the maximum will be 34 degree Celsius. In Dehradun, mainly clear sky will will prevail. The temperature will hover between 13 and 34 degrees Celsius. In Chandigarh, the minimum temperature will be 19 degrees Celsius and maximum will be 35 degrees Celsius. Mainly clear sky will be there in Chandigarh. In Hyderabad, the minimum temperature will be 23 degrees Celsius while maximum will be 32 degrees Celsius. The city will have generally cloudy sky with heavy rain. In Ahmedabad, minimum temperature will be 24 while maximum will be 37 degrees Celsius. And now, before we close, the headlines once again. Mortal remains of Ram Vilas Paswan flown to Patna. Cremation to take place tomorrow. Election Commission doubles broadcast and telecast time for national and recognized state parties on DD and AIR during Bihar Assembly polls. COVID recovery rate improves to 85.52%. World Food Program awarded 2020 Nobel Peace Prize for combating hunger. In tennis, Rafael Nadal faces D. Schwartzman while Novak Djokovic to clash with Stefano Tsitsipas in French Open semi-finals. 
and Rajasthan Royals take on Delhi Capitals in Sharjah in IPL cricket. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.com and News on AIR app. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.